Nigeria's legislation is just one of several anti-gay measures recently introduced or debated throughout the African continent. In Uganda, lawmakers are considering instituting the death penalty for homosexuality. And other countries, including Malawi, Cameroon, and Ghana, have similar efforts underway. For more on this and on the U.S. response, we go to Jabulani Chen Korea, the African Program Coordinator for the International Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission. She joins us from Johannesburg, South Africa. Welcome to FSRN. Hi, thank you. It's great to be part of your show. Thanks. It's great to have you. Let's start with the bill in Nigeria. If passed, what effects would it have on the ground for people and for grassroots organizations such as the ones that you work with? It's unbelievably major in, in terms of how, you know, health healthcare interventions are supposed to be developed. Um, the fact that, uh, you know, th- there'll be a, a complete decrease around tolerance. So it's, you know, it's the gays today and who will it be tomorrow? You know, and this is how conflicts, genocide and all these, you know, um, very violent uh events that we witness in the world happens, you know, and so I think there's there's a lot of uh, negative implications, but specifically towards service provision, you know, there's been a lot of progress um, made in, in, in advancing and creating um, healthcare interventions, for example, for men who have sex with men. So how are these uh, proposed programs supposed to take place in an environment where MSM is prohibited, where it's now it will be outlawed, you know, and so on. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot that that's that's under threat here. The fact that you know um, organizations would have to go underground or be exiled um, out of Nigeria, and you know, one wouldn't even want to begin to think of the negative consequences that that, that this law will have. Earlier this month, President Obama came out and in opposition to the bill in Nigeria. He even threatened cutting off aid to Nigeria if it is passed. How do you see that move? I don't think that um, cutting off aid um, is going to help any any state at this stage, particularly in Africa, where we are highly dependent on aid. We, we clearly welcome uh, the comments by President Obama in terms of asserting the fact that LGBT rights are part of human rights. And similarly, the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, has been amazing. She's been a fantastic ally. Um, but I think in this particular issue, I don't think sanctions is, is the way to go. I think, um, if anything, we need to look at the broader framework of human rights and how this is being applied within Africa and you know, and to focus on, on those broader aspects and not just to say, well, if this right is not attained, that we will impose these sanctions. I think there are a broad range of rights that are currently being violated uh, within Nigeria, within many, many African states. Well, I'd like to follow up on that. If If you don't feel that a withholding of funds or threatening of withholding of funds is effective, in this fight against anti-LGBT legislation or policies in African countries, what do you see as an effective strategy, especially coming from someplace like the U.S., where people have been calling on the U.S. to not just put forth rhetoric, but to put forth some concrete, real proposals that are going to be effective? What do you see as an effective strategy? Well, I think well, what has worked in, 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 in the U.S., for example, has been persistent, uh, you know, and and very consistent work by civil society organizations to engage with its state. The the real fundamental issues that that we have to address within Africa, and Africa really, in, in a holistic sense, really is a continent of dialogue. For example, on the Nigeria Bill, the coalition working in Nigeria has been consistently communicating with the parliament, has consistently been drafting briefs to the Nigeria parliament, educating them on what are the implications to should this bill be passed. And the implications are wider than sanctions. Implications are about the, 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 that it will be a complete regression of human development. And Malawi, for example, and we, we hope that this is in a positive direction, but Malawi has in the past month, um, called for a complete review of all its penal legislation, um, you know, and, and I think this is a step in the right direction. 
As you look ahead to the next couple months, there is this pending legislation working its way through in Nigeria, meeting resistance from activists. Uh, where do you see the movement to protect LGBT rights in Africa, whether in Nigeria or in other countries throughout the region? Where do you see it in the next few months? Well, uh, we are not going to stop with what we are doing, and that is that we are persistently going to shame states that want to continue criminalizing us, that we are going to shame them for their human rights records, um, you know, for the attacks on ordinary civilians who have peaceful protests. Um, I think we will continue monitoring the situation. We will alert, uh, you know, um, the special rapporteurs where necessary if LGBT persons are detained uh, we want to live in democracies. Everybody desires to live in a con- in, in its con- you know in in your country of choice and you know where you can live freely and be who you are and you know whether you are Nigerian or South African or Cameroonian, you want to be proudly part of that nationality in its holistic way. And no state is going to just continue criminalizing us because you know we love people of the same sex. Jabalani Chen Parea is the Africa Program Coordinator for the International Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission. She joined us from Johannesburg. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.